first introduce you to Ted, Ted Smith. Uh, he's been a member at Highlands for 735 years, somewhere in there. Uh, he's our club historian, so if you need any facts about the history of the club, he's the guy to talk to. He actually came and did a presentation last year or the year before uh, on the golf course history and where it started, and it was really neat. So maybe we can get him to do that again this year at some point. So. We're just going to carry on our normal day. Uh, Ted's going to be videoing um, you guys, so just do as you normally do, and a bit better maybe. <laughs> okay. um, why we're doing this is we get a lot of questions from members that uh, we typically don't really have answers for, so we figured this is the best way is to go out there and show them a few things that we do. Uh, create a little video uh, that we can put on the blog. Now, if you're not comfortable with that, we're not going to put you on the blog. We'll edit you out. Uh, I would hope that you'd all be in for that. Uh, but we're obviously not going to force you to be on the blog. So we'll get a sign. Uh, Tom will get a sheet together and we'll sign off. Um, if you're okay with that, but I think it'll be a lot of fun. So, um, we'll go over the board like we normally would do. So we're going to be normal today. Uh, you can see I've outlined some hours as far as what how long things should take. Okay, we're at the point now where you guys know what you're doing, right? Um, you know, for the people that have hours beside them, does this seem reasonable for the jobs that you've been given? Okay, we did some adjusting. Um, you know, obviously Warren, because you're by yourself right now, because Jesse's a no-show. This might be a little longer, but we'll, uh, we'll ship some people with you. Uh, Joe and Scott, you're gonna, is it Joe and, Joe and Scott are going to go together today? Yes. Does anybody have any questions? Okay, Sabrina, you're going with yep. Jenna just to help with coolers? And the clubhouse. Sure. And the clubhouse? Well, the clubhouse has to be done every day. Yeah. But then just, you're not going to stay with her right? yep. the whole time, then you're going to go to 3500. Uh, Warren, Jesse, when Jesse gets here, do all the edges, so you're doing the full, full meal deal. Hey, remember the rakes get moved on number one. Uh, who else? I get a hold of me, call Ted, because Ted will be by me. Uh, Nolan cut the putting green with the walker 12 to 6. Okay. First, and then come back and try flex 3 to 9. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Uh, so Jen, I need to do it with you to do the cleanups. Okay. Everybody's got her? Let's roll. So the first thing we always do in the morning is we always go into the pump house, which is our irrigation irrigation room, and make sure that our pumps aren't running. Now what we're concerned about here is if one of our main pumps is running in the morning, that means we either have a sprinkler head stuck on or there's a break somewhere. So that's something that we do every morning. Uh, obviously, if there's a break out there, that changes the scheduling. I will usually do it when I come from my truck, or Don will do it when he comes from his truck. Take a quick peek in here, make sure that this is the only pump that's on, not the two main ones. Uh, take a quick check around and make sure everything's good in the pump hose, and then away we go. So that's the first, first order of business. Then normally we come out, What we do after that is we make sure all the staff is on their way because the, the biggest part of the day and, and, and probably the biggest challenge is getting all the vehicles out of the yard to their first jobs. Thankfully, uh, Jen, who's over there, uh, one of our more experienced people, she has pulled out all the equipment this morning. Uh, she will typically show up at around 5 o'clock to make sure that everything's out. Otherwise, everything would be parked in the sheds and it would be a big smozzle and we'd take probably twice the amount of time. So every day, someone's assigned to pull out the equipment and it's usually our senior staff that can drive all our equipment, which is really good. So Jen did that this morning and should help us out. The, what we expect of our staff is check the oil, check the fuel, and check their tires. And take a quick walk around to the equipment, make sure everything's good, clean out anything that was left the day before, which hopefully isn't much, 
Uh, we fuel our equipment at the end of the day, so there should be very few people filling up with the fuel tanks. And basically it's just a matter of the supervisors. Unfortunately, Sean's not here today, but the supervisors is getting everybody going and helping in whatever way they can to get people to their first job. We have a we have a new uh, person getting trained on the Timor, but his name is Dion, uh, and he's worked at a golf course for a lot of years. It's just he's new to our our uh, facility. is make sure that the backlog is on sand for the day. I fill the members' bottles. Uh, so Daryl always gives them a hat because it takes people that muscle the sand in there. Uh, we're good. We're good. And you always have to consider the day. You know, if it's men's league, then yeah. sometimes you need a little more because they don't the sand. So you kind of gauge that way. Thanks, bud. Basically just sand and bluegrass mix goes in the bottle uh, and away we go. So this should be plenty to last them for the day. So. Thanks buddy. Right. So what we do every morning is we actually, today we're triplexing the greens, which is a, a uh, riding mower. Um, but for the putting green, we never tri-flex the putting green because it's too tough on it because of its size and all the turning that you have to do because it's so tight. So Nolan's going to walk full the putting green and then he's going to hop on a tri-flex and go to the normal green. Most days in the morning, we actually walk full all the greens. But because of today, we have to get some stuff done as far as weed whipping the bunkers and things like that and some project stuff that we're triplexing the greens to give us some more time to do other stuff. You can see how the walk mowing is a, it's a real good workout for the staff. So every morning, and it's usually me, I'll come up here and what I'm trying to determine is the speed of the greens for the day. So this unit right here is called a stip meter. Uh, so basically how it works is there's a little groove where the ball sits in. You try to find a flat spot because that's going to give you a better reading. And what you do is you raise the stip meter to a certain point until the ball rolls out of that groove. Typically, you'll use three golf balls. Once you finish that, you take an average. It's pretty easy to tell whereabouts you are. And you'll measure the distance from the bottom of the stem meter. Ball's wet. So right now we're we're nine and a half feet one way. I know the members sometimes don't believe that, but it is true. <laughs> but now we have to go to the other side in case there's a slope. Uh, we want to measure both sides and take an average. So if we do the same thing going the other way. So remember we have nine feet, nine and a half feet one way. there so we want to try to avoid that so 
nine, nine and a half feet again. So this, that's why we measure this spot because it's actually a perfect, it's perfectly level. So that's going to give you your best reading. So right now I have nine and a half feet, which I'll put on the board. Uh, we'll go over to the board shortly. What I do though is as I drive around the golf course, I check a couple other greens to confirm my speed because you're not always going to have exactly the same speed on all the greens. 17 green is one that we constantly battle with that seems to be a bit slower because it just grows really thick. So that's one I'll definitely check just to get the low end. And I typically will put the low end of the speed on the board. Uh, you know, it's just personal preference. You get a lot of questions as far as is your speed accurate, but trust me, we do go out and check it on a daily basis. And it's something that we, uh, you know, we're, we're very diligent about because it's important for the overall health of the turf to know where we're at as far as the speed goes. And, uh, our, our target is between 9 and 10, 9 feet and 10 feet. Uh, that's our range for normal play. Once we get into tournament season, we tend to bump them up. You know, the oil mints is, is likely 10 feet. Club Championship, 10 and a half, somewhere in that range, and the Martel, 10 and a half, somewhere in that range. So those, those are our goals that we set. So that's the stiff process right there. So today, we battled green speed for a, for a number of reasons, mostly aeration and sand. Uh, the mowers just don't cut well when they're cutting sand. Uh, it's really tough to keep them sharp, and that's the key with getting speed, is getting a really good cut. Uh, so we're getting some really good cuts now, so you'll start to see the speed climb. So nine and a half today is really good, so we're quite happy with that. That's the best speed we've had in in a couple weeks now. So the members should be smiling. <laughs> so now that we have our speed, we need to record it on both the whiteboards. Uh, one's here and one's at the pro shop. So 9.5 feet, so basically saying nine and a half feet for today. Uh, we put the date, which is Thursday. June 6th, I believe. I always check my phone to make sure because I look like a... One in a row, you're ready. <laughs> I know that we're rolling greens today, which we either double cut or roll depending on the day. That's pretty consistent, and even on weekends this year, we've been cutting and rolling first thing in the morning. And we put the time. So we'll, we'll be rolling at 10.30 in the morning. That gives my staff enough time to get out, roll all the greens, and still be done at the regular time, which is 1.30 is their, is their cutoff today. Uh, and then anything else that's going on during the day, uh, we are... Mini tiny tees on the back nine today. So just a simple minor aeration for the tees, part of our normal maintenance program. Uh, and that's really everything. Oh, we're also fertilizing tees on the back as well. basically what our day looks like today. Now we just go and transfer that information to the other board and it'll look exactly like this. Okay, so here's our fairway units. Uh, right now there's actually three fairway units out because we try to get through the golf course as quick as we can before the golfers get there. Unfortunately guys like Ted Smith catch us but it's placed too fast anyway. <laughs> uh, so we got uh, Scott in one machine and, and old man Joe. Joe just started with us yesterday. He's over 80 years old. Uh, he's one of our operators, actually worked for Club Car for a number of years. Uh, and Art recommended him to come here and work for us. So uh, he's picked up the machine real quick. So what we try to do on the fairways is we cut the fairways most days. Uh, you know, I'd say probably five days a week. Some of the members would like us to cut the fairways every day. Uh, but it's a real huge time-consuming item of labor. Uh, so we do the best we can, but there's times when we have to, we might have to skip a fairway cut or skip a tee cut so we can get some of these minor projects around the golf course or else those minor projects just linger throughout the year. So, so typically three fairway units get through the course in about four and a half hours. 
they cut in two different directions. We, we run by a clock system, 12 being towards the green, 6 being towards the tee. We cut 10 to 4 and 8 to 2 and try to create a diamond pattern. And what we also try to do is burn those lines in so that they're really recognizable. Now you need good operators to do that, just to be able to follow those same lines. Is any little, any little discrepancy in your path and now your lines are off. Uh, these guys aren't, they're a little bit new on the mower, so it's gonna take some time to burn in those lines. For major tournaments, we do the salt and pepper cut, which is basically just dividing the fairway in half, dark light. Uh, so there, it looks like there's a line right down the middle, so you have a place to kind of aim for. Uh, but that's something we do for tournaments. If we did that throughout the year, we start to get some rippling. But it's a different look for the members, which they appreciate, and a different look for special tournaments as well. So we expect that these fairway mowers will be in by probably around 10 o'clock, enough time to wash and go home, because these particular staff members are five-hour staff, and then they're out. So today we're raking bunkers. Uh, that's something we do pretty much on a daily basis. Uh, we don't we don't rake the edges on a daily basis. That's kind of every second day. So that's what Warren's doing right now. Uh, so he's going all the way around with the rake, creating a nice little lip on the bunker. Uh, and the idea with that is when a ball goes in the bunker, we don't want the ball to spit out of the bunker. We don't want to create a wrap where the ball just catapults out. Plus it gives a real nice look around the bunker if you have you know, a, an inch or two of a lip. And that's what Warren's trying to accomplish right now. So what he'll do is he'll rake the edges, uh, then he'll go in with the sand pro and do the middle, and then come back out and he's basically done. One of the keys with uh, bunker raking and that process is spreading the rakes around. And the staff knows that you know, I relate to them pretend you're a golfer and you're in the bunker. If I was hitting a bunker shot, could I access a rake fairly easily, right? So part of their job is to spread the rakes around and make sure that if a member's in a bunker, they have access to a rake close by. So they're not walking the entire bunker to go grab a rake, so they got a rake with footprints all the way out. Uh, now Warren's just cleaning out some debris from the bunker, uh, which happens sometimes with all the trees we have. If he just went in and started raking the bunker right now with the Sapro, he'd probably just pick up a bunch of debris on his rake and he'd cause grooves and make a mess. So he's doing a good job making sure that the bunker's cleaned up before he goes in with the Sapro. Say hi, Warren. <laughs> is with these long narrow bunkers and the ones that typically get debris because you want to get you want to rake it and get out of there as quick as possible because it seems like the longer you stay in there the more of a mess you make. It actually did a really nice job on that bunker. Very little grooves. Is it on? Is it on? Oh yeah. Okay so the first thing that uh, we do when we're changing pins is we decide where we're going to put the pin. So what I like to do is I like to go a pin forward than it was the day before. So if it was blue, which it is today, I'd go red. If it was red, I'd go white. And if it was white, I'd go blue. So um, after we've decided what pin color we're going to be, then we're deciding what plate, where it's going to be for red. So red is the front third of the green. So typically when we have uh, our front nine pins, we try to have like three left, three middle, three right, and they can be any color, right? So next step is deciding where we're going to put the pin. So I'm deciding to put it on the left side today. 
after we've decided what color and what side we want to put it on, then we're looking for uh, previous plugs that we've seen before. And when we're looking for plugs, we, we try to be like four feet away from it at least, because if we put it any closer, it creates a lot of wear for that side of the green. And so I see a plug here, so I don't want to put it close to there. And we also don't want to put it too close to the edge either, because that's not fair play. So I see an area here that I want to put it on, but there's a divot here. And so if there's a divot around, then it kind of affects putting. So what happens here is I like to just cut on the divot, and then that removes the, uh, the divot around your plate. So the next step is cutting the pin. So what I like to do is just stick it in, and then you take out the, usually the top third. I would say, or half, and then uh, just put it in your bucket here. Uh, after you're taking out the rest, and we're going to a certain depth, and this is to have the cup in deep enough so that it's not too close to the lip, so that the ball doesn't bounce out, and it's also high enough so that the cup doesn't sink over the course of the day. So after I've cut out the hole, I'm just wiping the inside of the cup so that it stays white and it stays nice so that you guys can see it from a certain distance out. And uh, after doing all this, then you're just uh, just putting it in now. And uh, we use a, a cup setter, which basically just puts it to a certain depth. That's pretty regulation. And then all you're doing is you're just stepping on it, sticking it in, twisting it, and removing it. And when you're doing this, after you remove it, the, the lip on the outside raises a little bit, so you're just going to step on it a little bit and get it nice and flat around the cup. And that's basically putting the pin. And then so the last step is uh, just seeing if you're level. And uh, I would say it's pretty good with uh, being straight up and down. So. After we've done that, then our last part is uh, replacing the old pin. And so, since it was blue, I'm just gonna go over here. And we're just using the previous hole that we cut. And uh, we do this, we cut the pins every day. And this is to give golfers variety and, and change so that they're always having a challenge. So I'm just pulling it out with a, like a cup puller and then shaking off the inside to remove any dirt that's in the cup or on the bottom of the cup and uh, then I'm just using the previous plug so I'm using the bottom half first and uh, you just stop it down a little bit so it creates a tight because if you don't then it'll it'll sink over time and then the hardest part about this is uh, getting the right depth so I have this much to play with so I'm just filling the rest with uh, loose chunks and uh, getting it ready so that I can put the top part in. So after I've kind of uh, filled it up, then I'm just putting the, the plug in. And I used to, I like to have it a little bit higher because if it's loose, once you step on it, it kind of packs down. And then we're just putting water around it. And uh, that's just to help it grow and so it doesn't die and then raise the edge so that the outside edge doesn't uh, buckle in. So then after that, it's just stepping on it. Playing around with it a little bit just so it's in. And uh, that's basically changing a pin. And then you feel it so it's level and that's not gonna affect the play if someone puts over it. And there you go. So we're here with Jen, one of our staff members, our more experienced staff members. She is doing what we call junior setup, which the main part of that is filling the divots. Uh, and moving the T markers. So what she's doing here is is going to the divot line from yesterday 
and putting a sand seed mix in, in all the divots and that's what she's going to do first. So the key with this is to try to fill the divots to the top and by the time you leave not make it look messy when you're done. So Jen's doing a really nice job <laughs> with her boots. <laughs> So now that all the divots are filled, what she's going to do is grab the markers uh, that have been put off to the side because we cut the tees today. And what we want to do with the tee markers is find a good spot that doesn't have any wear uh, so that the golfers have a nice clean shot from the tee. And what we also want to do with, with the markers is really try to vary the play as best we can. A little more difficult on 17T where we are now just because it's such a small tee box. And Jen's gonna make sure that she's at least two club lengths from the back of the tee on her position. <laughs> and also what she's trying to do is position the tee markers for the, the golfer's shot. Uh, so they're pointed in a, in, a, in, a, in a perfect direction. And then what she's doing there is evening out her pace. So for Jen, it's probably about six paces. For some of the guys on our crew, it's probably more like five. And she'll try to keep that consistent all the way around the golf course. So now she'll look at her, her tee angles and make sure they're good for the shot. And that's really it. This is our job board. This is where we start the day in the morning. Our staff comes in checks the board, sees what they're doing. We have their names and magnetic here. If I want Dennis on the 4,000, I put him on the 4,000. One of the neat things we do too is we kind of color code our names. So you can see everyone's in blue, that's their first job. Doug walk mowed the practice green this morning, and then afterwards his second job in green, he's working on sun. We'll prepare the job board in the morning, everyone can see what they do. Sometimes we'll have the second jobs up there. By the time they come in from their first job, it'll be up there. So this is our safety net, kind of, to show the staff or let the staff know exactly what they're doing if we're occupied doing something else. We have all our tasks on the side, our employees, and then we also have a room for any special notes that our staff might need on any given day if there's something going on out there, out, going on out there, out of the ordinary that they need to know. We have the date, our tea time is very important. If we have a shotgun, the staff need to know that they need to be finished their jobs by the time the shotgun starts. Our lunch, which doesn't really change unless it's later in the season. And then we have this entire other half of the board here as well to communicate any extras. Our shopping list if we need to pick up anything that we're starting to run short on. Any important dates, right now it's just filled with people's time off. And phone numbers so that everyone knows uh, how they can contact us if they have any questions when they come in about what's on the job board. Another neat thing we have up here too is we have the days of the week and this is where our staff can see if there's anything coming up throughout the week that they might want to know about. If there's shotguns or if we're going to verticut or top dress they can see when we're going to do that and be a little bit more prepared in the morning when they come in because they know what's going on. And right now we just have our weekend schedule up. So that's it. One of the neat things about our job board is that it is magnetic on this half and it's also dry erase. So if people's names are magnetic, I can shift them around to wherever I want them. Really simple, really speeds up the process. It's also dry erase as well. So I can erase it, move someone's name, something else is going on. If I don't want these people on sod, if I want them somewhere else, it's an easy change. Some of the names you can see as well are our newer stuff that we haven't quite had Magnus on the board as well. Okay, so today on the fairways for the first time this year, we're actually doing our salt and pepper uh, cut on the fairways. This basically means that half the fairway is going to be dark and half the fairway is going to be light with kind of a line down the middle. Uh, we do this for major tournaments, so with the International Oilman's coming up on Tuesday, uh, we do it for the Martel and we do it for the Club Championship. So just a new look, something different for the members and the tournament participants. Uh, so you can see we 
got two fairway units on this fairway right here, basically splitting, uh, going up and down. Uh, Sabrina on this fairway unit and Scott on the other one. Basically what will happen is we'll burn in these lines uh, for the next few days and you'll start to see a clear division of dark and light with the line down the middle on the fairways and it'll look really good. Here on the 10th hole, uh, I just want to show you our rough bore. This rough bore is called the 4000. It basically cuts the majority of, majority of our rough, uh, excluding the surrounds. And this is Dennis, who's on the machine today. Uh, he's typically our rough bore uh, for the golf course on most occasions. seven uh, T surround with our lead, our 3500 operator. So basically this particular machine cuts T surrounds, green surrounds, around the bunkers, anything that's kind of mounded. Uh, our lead is on this most days. Uh, this is a great machine, this is a new machine. And with the rollers on the front, uh, you know, those, those are there so that it doesn't scalp the grass when you go over the mounds. So our lead's gonna show you how the decks actually move on this piece of equipment and the reason we have that is so that uh, the decks can go sideways and our lead doesn't drive into bunkers. She's going to show us that right now. surrounds, green surrounds, and bunker surrounds. And Arlene's going to show us how the actual deck swivels on this machine. Go ahead, Arlene. that feature is so that when Arlene's going around bunkers, uh, so basically cutting bunker surrounds, her actual decks can swivel so her tire doesn't drive in the bunker, so it's a great feature. Uh, so Arlene's going to cut some surrounds right now. System, so either 8 to 2 or 10 to 4, uh, create a diamond pattern. And basically we're just going to watch Nolan and how he maneuvers the machine. Uh, this is a brand new machine, cuts really well. And take it away, Nolan.
So to conclude our video, we're out here on the famous uh, trees at the corner of 17, which people talk a lot about. Uh, I just I just wanted to talk briefly about, uh, you know, I, I bring up with my staff on many occasions that we've had such a good start to the year. And in combination with having a really good staff, we have an opportunity to provide uh, a really good product throughout the year and the key for us now is just to maintain that throughout the year uh, and, and as I say to my staff you're gonna have years that you don't get the start that we've got this year you know other clubs have struggled uh, so it's important that we really uh, fine-tune things around here get some projects taken care of provide a really good product because you know you never know what's gonna happen next year with your start uh, so we really we really drill that into the staff and, and again, just an unbelievable staff with a ton of experience. Uh, really makes my job a lot easier. Excellent assistance in Sean and Don. Uh, Melanie, the horticulturalist, is doing an unbelievable job. Doug, the mechanic with the machines, is, is unbelievable at what he does. And it's just, just a pleasure to work with the people that we have in place this year. So uh, thanks to Ted for doing this video for us and, and, and his spare time.